Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We review anything and everything. And today we are going to get into a unboxing and a build video. So I did a previous build video for Lego recently and I am going to do another one. But this one I am going to do in parts or at the least I will break when I record. And if I end up fusing all the videos into one then i'll do so but otherwise i'm definitely gonna have to break it in parts because in terms of my recording because this is going to be long and the last one i did was long which was of you can see here on the side over here the um obi-wan kenobi's hut which took me about an hour and 20 minutes um so this right here is the new set the 75357 set ghost and phantom so this is the ghost and that's the phantom connected with sorry about any kind of light glare connected with um the ahsoka the ahsoka show the live action show on disney which is you can see her character here um, because it's around built around her show and then here you can see the uh figures that actually come with this ship you have first officer hawkins you have lieutenant beta you have general Hera, and if I'm pronouncing these names wrong, I'm sorry about that. General uh, Hera, or is it Hyra? But Hera Sindula, Jason Sindula, that's her son, and Chopper C110P or 10P. Um, so, you know, some people are probably more familiar with than I am who watched Rebels, but I actually never watched Rebels, though I did recently watch a video that caught me up on what. Um, happened during rebels because even though i want to go back and see it it would probably take me so long to watch it versus uh, the fact that i already got into the ahsoka show so similar to the last time when i did the um build video for obi-wan's hut this is going to be a relaxed setting of just chilling relaxing dim lit quiet music me rambling on so if it's not your cup of tea um that is fine and you know, you can just stay tuned for the review when I get to that part, um, get to the review. But if you are into what we're going to be doing here, then just kind of stay tuned, enjoy the show. And um, yeah, so let me flip this upside down to show you the back of the box here. So. One thing I want to say, as I mentioned in my previous build video, let me try to cover that up a little bit, some of that light. I'm sorry, you can't really see it that well. I'm trying to hold it in a way where you can kind of see that there's, there's that much over there, but um, I know it's a little hard to see. I'm just going to lift the, um, the camera up so you can kind of see it a little better. So... To me, the ship looks very nice. I really don't know that much about it. Some people who probably know a lot more about it because they're fans of the series would know better, but uh, I don't really know too much on it. But um, I do want to say that it looks like a nice ship and apparently it has a degree of interior space. Now, I uh, invite you to go look at my past um, my past build video of the Obi-Wan's hut and including my past video of my me customizing my armored marauder tank from Star Wars into a spaceship, my mock build, because in that in both of those videos, I talk about my interest in uh, spaceships and them having interior space. And this one actually has some interior space. Though it doesn't have as much as, say, something like the Millennium Falcon, which is probably around the equal size of a ship in terms of the Lego build. Not necessarily in terms of the universe, canon universe. I think that this is a lot bigger in canon universe than the um, than the Millennium Falcon, though I could be wrong. But in terms of the Lego build, this is probably around the same size, but it has less interior space because the dynamic of the build requires um, that you can't really have as much space. But with that being said, it does have some space and uh, to me, it looks very interesting and I'm glad that it actually has some space. And versus the previous version that I've looked up some videos on and anyone who knows about the previous version of this, which um, I think came out 
I don't know if it was 2014, 15, 16, it came out a while back, um, did not have hardly any interior space. So this is definitely um, different in regards to that. So I am going to change up the angle of things and we're gonna get into the build. Okay, guys, so let me get myself a little situated and I hope that you guys don't mind that the lighting is not great in here right now, but um, I do like the whole dim lit setting and just relaxing and just kind of jumping into some some just regular convo with you guys. Let me see how I want to go about opening this because I do want to make sure that it, I don't like opening my boxes in a sloppy way. I like to be able to keep the box. So I'm trying to open it in a way where I can reclose it. Now, I'm not going to have everything on screen um, at one time. So bear with me. But like I said, with my builds from before, and you can comment below. Uh, but I, this is number one, let me put that aside. I enjoy the process, being that I'm new to this, of just rambling on and comfortably building without any kind of pressure and just enjoying the moment. So hopefully you guys are able to enjoy the moment with me. So what I'm looking at here, we have this kind of envelope that has the instructions. I'm gonna put that aside for one second. And what I see here is we have what looks like, um, looks like the highest number is 12. So we have 12 bags. So what I am going to do is I am going to assume, which I didn't learn this lesson the first time that I was building with um, Obi-Wan's hut that had one and two bags. Um, I'm not used to building really a lot of these Lego sets, so I dumped everything out, not realizing that I think I could have built it in the pieces of the bags. Those who are experts at you know having Legos it's probably a lot more familiar with that. So with that being said, what I think I'm going to do is put all the rest of the bags away, back into the box, and I'm just gonna do builds one and two for now and ramble on a little, a little bit. Now this is my first, matter of fact, let me put all the bags away first before I start talking so you can hear me. So this is my first large um, Lego Star Wars. I get a good angle here. I want to make sure you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. This is my first Lego Star Wars like big ship for one. Lego, well, at first, Lego Star Wars um, large set, period. So, big ship, large set. The only set that I had prior to this before, um, you know, introducing the uh, the Obi-Wan's hut, which, uh, like I said, I just recently built and, and obviously bought, was um, the Armor Marauder, which was my only Lego, um, my only Star Wars Lego set. Um, so, with that being said, this is my first foray into uh, one of the bigger sets. And here we go, the instruction manual, which I will keep this folder so I can um, put it back in uh, just as a way to preserve it. We have stickers here, which from I've never had to have a set where I put stickers on, but from what I hear, they're always a pain. So I'm hoping that it won't be too much of a problem, but I'm going to put the stickers back in the envelope and we're gonna put that aside. I'm gonna put this a little closer to me so I am able to 
not have it in the way of when I open up the first set. Well, the first bag. And so it says here there's actually 13 bags. So I guess one of them I didn't, um, you know, notice the packaging when I poured them all out. But there's a total of 13 bags. And what's interesting is though I have in a case of Legos um, uh, put away one of the separators, this one comes with a separator, which is actually very um, interesting and it shows you how to use it. So that's very cool. So apparently number one is the Phantom. So the main ship is called the Ghost and the smaller ship is called the Phantom. And one thing I definitely wanna say is, I like, that's one feature I kinda like about this. As I mentioned in my previous video, I'm a big fan about scale, but even more so than that when it comes to Lego figures is I am very big when it comes to um, interior space and things that make you feel like you get the most out of your Lego figures. Because a lot of times you have certain ships, like in contrast, and I mentioned this in a previous in, a, in, in um, the other build video about how the, um, about how the, the, um, sorry, I was distracted for a second. Uh, about how the Ahsoka ship, which I actually think looks like a very nice ship, happens to be, um, it has no interior space. And so that takes away from that dynamic of you having this kind of worldly sense with your builds where, you know, characters are getting in their ships, not just for play, but even display. If somebody wanted to display that their characters are sitting in a ship or whatever, you get that Ahsoka ship and it comes with um, it comes with four characters, which is great. And how many, how many, um, characters it comes with, but the negative to it is that in the size of the ship is actually pretty decent too. The problem is that only one person can get in the ship. So that really takes away from it. Um, so that's something where I think, and I actually taking a look at that ship, I actually think that it can be modded in a way where on the side wing panels, they're able to fold upwards and then you can kind of fit stuff in it. I think if somebody was to just height, increase the height of those flaps that can open up, you might be able to get it to the point where a minifigure can actually stand up in it. So I think that would be actually very nice. So if someone's able to, um, to maybe pull that off down the line. So let me get started on the first page here, which we will be building. Let me, um, turn this box around so I could see the names of each person. Again, we're building Lieutenant Beta. I'm, I'm reading the box a little upside down, so hopefully I'm getting that name right. We got his headpiece right here. Now I'm, I'm a big fan of, you know, having things like a main ship and then, and then the scale, and people mention this in, in review videos of the ship, having the scale to then have the the um, Phantom, the main ship is the ghost, have the Phantom be small and they can get in it like a, you know, a portable escape ship or almost like a pod. And I just really think that that's awesome because um, even if you're not necessarily a fan of Star Wars or maybe you don't know about Star Wars and you just want a spaceship because you're just in the spaceships, period. Um, you know, I'm gonna put him back here and stand him up on the platform of my Lego city in the background. And, um, you know, just that whole concept of, you know, uh, that scale in terms of spaceships and having a space pod, if you're just into those kind of things in general, not necessarily Star Wars, I think that's really like a really cool thing. So, um, so I like that. Um, okay, I'm just making sure that everything's in, in frame because I can't see necessarily what I'm building, but apparently, from here to the book to about the middle part of the book is in frame. So I'm just going to build away as I ramble and you guys can just um, join me. So yes, this is actually one that I was looking for. And what was interesting is that when I was looking to purchase this, I was on the fence going back and forth between this and, and between um, the Millennium Falcon and the Razor Crest. 
And it's not that I don't want to get the Razor Crest. At some point, I'm gonna actually wait till Black Friday time because most of the time these things go on sale. The Black, uh, the Razor Crest and the Millennium Falcon. I'm trying to find this. Here we go. The Razor Crest and the and, and the Millennium Falcon um, are both actually said to be the latest Millennium Falcon from the one that has um, Lando in the future. You know, in the when he's aged up. Um, Finn and whatnot. I'm not sure if Ray is inside that set too. I think so. That one um, is said to be expiring um, this year, at the end of this year. So with that being said, those are things you want to jump on. Now I was able to actually get the Millennium Falcon on eBay for a very good price. So I ended up deciding just to buy that rather than wait. But the Razor Crest, I'm going to wait because I didn't want to spend too much all at one moment. Um, Let's see, I need a six piece, and that is these two of these. So with that being said, this ship I bought because I'm sure it's not going to go on discount anytime soon. Even if it, it does come to Black Friday, I can't imagine it's going to be discounted because it just came out. Maybe it will. Maybe it'll be like $10 off, but I didn't mind to purchase it now. Um, I'll just save on the other sets when those ones come because I know those will be um, on sale because I've seen the Razor Crest go on sale during Black Friday for... Uh, wow, like I, I, I want to say that it was below ninety dollars before, so that's a big sale considering that normally it's one forty. Um, this seems like a a build right here that will actually go pretty quick if I just kind of stop talking and focus. But obviously, I do this for the talking and the enjoyment. So you know, like I said before, if it's not your cup of tea. I totally understand and you can just catch me on the review but um so I chose this set because it's different it's unique I've been watching the other ones not that I had the other ones but I've been watching them you know reviews on them seeing them online uh, on Amazon or whatever other various sites that I see them on and um, you know it's just kind of one of those things that's just been there in the background for a while now so i knew to myself you know okay like those things have been there they're there they've been around for a while but this is a new set and it's new to me because i never seen rebels so for that reason it just had a certain level of additional interest to it and um and i and i enjoyed that you know seeing a new ship and it's funny because uh, i mentioned in the um in a previous video of when i did my mock build with the uh, armored marauder into a ship um, i didn't do the build on the station on the channel but i showed you the finished product and uh, one thing that was interesting was I, I i was mentioning about what i coined the term uh the personal hero ship meaning like it's their own kind of personal ship it's almost like a a, a living entity in a sense like it's just as important as the hero himself and uh, you know, it's his home, it's his, his, his travel means, it's so many things. And, and, and you could see like what would fall into that category in terms of this term that I make up. Obviously it wouldn't be a Star Destroyer or nothing like that, but it's things like the Millennium Falcon, it's things like the Razor Crest, it's things like the Ghost here, um, you know, where it's a little crew and it's their personal ship and there's usually like a main hero or maybe two main people and they have like a little crew. In the case of the um, Millennium Falcon, it was a two man crew originally. Um, but you know, then you have ships like this, which have a multi-man crew. And essentially it's like, they're your heroes, they're your main stars, and this is their personal ship. I guess you could consider it almost akin to the way like a superhero would have like, say Batman, would have his Batmobile, you know, it's a signature vehicle. It is something that stands out. So in that same manner, and, and it's almost has an identity of its own because it's so popular. It's not just like this kind of generic thing. It's like, you know, and with that being said, that's what I was trying to build when I was building that um, with the armor Marauder turning it into a spaceship as I was trying to build my own, as I called it, coined the term personal hero ship. And this, um, when it comes to those categories of ships in general, whether you make one up your own or whether you, you know, it's one that is um, from, you know, uh, already created in universe. Um, the ones that are in universe for Star Wars is obviously the Millennium Falcon was the one that started it all. Then when you had the uh, 
the Mandalorian show, the Razor Crest became that, which was very popular. And it's funny because these personal hero ships, because they are the star of the show just as much as the hero themselves, because it's what they travel in and it's their home, they become so popular that what happens is, um, you know, those particular ships become famous in terms of that lore of, of, you know, in this case, the Star Wars universe. And it's interesting because the Star Wars universe, unlike uh, many other, you know, many other, uh, you know, say universes, whatever, because they have so many separate stories where um, the hero changes from story to story, you know, in the old ones, you had um, Han Solo and Chewbacca being like the heroes along with Luke, obviously, and they all got on the ship. But you know, it was Han Solo's ship. Um, and then you have, um, you had uh, the Mandalorian where he's the hero of his show and then he has his own ship. Every time you have a new star being that uh, the, the Star Wars universe is so big that you have plenty of room for different heroes and different stars. And now you have Ahsoka too and her own hero, personal hero ship. Um, you know, these ships become the focus of the new character's story. So it, they be, have a chance to kind of be in the spotlight and become famous, which is very interesting um, that that's the case. So with that being said, this, uh, well, obviously this is airing at the same time as, as uh, with the Ahsoka show. So in a way you could say this and, the, uh, and, and Ahsoka's ship share the spotlight. And even though Ahsoka's ship gets more airtime, this one has also back history in the fact that it um it uh is from the rebels show so that's in itself uh interesting thing that you have that going you know along with it um which like i said before i don't know anything about because i've never seen the rebels the um rebels show but nonetheless um it does have a, a, a big fan base around it, I think bigger than Ahsoka Ship because Ahsoka Ship is now making it, uh, gaining popularity because of the show, but this one already had popularity before the show. So I think that's definitely something, um, you know, to consider when it comes to that. But anyway, back to my point. So I picked up the ship. As to me, it's a new hero's ship. And, uh, you know, I, I find it to be quite interesting um, because it's new to me. Let's see. Another thing I want to point out too is though I have one of these black blasters in the hands of, um, what's his name again? Lieutenant Beta, you can see here. I've got two more, a black one and a gray one. So that's cool or silver. And so that's cool if that's just extra, but unless that goes into the hands of some of the other guys. When I look at the photos actually uh, on the box, um, General Sindula, I'm just gonna call her that because her first name, I feel like I'm not pronouncing it right, Hera. Um, General Sindula, has a black gun as well. So that gray one might be extra, which is great because I actually lost one of the pistols that came inside the um, Armor Marauder one. Uh, well, I won't say I lost it, my kids lost it, but you know, they were young, so that's expected, right? Um, let's see. Sometimes I always get thrown off with the colors. Um, when what I'm looking for in the piece and I'll be like looking for a piece and I'm actually looking for the wrong color versus what they have. I'll see like say a darker color on the picture and then it's actually a lighter color and I'm trying to grab the wrong piece. So there should be two of these right here. And of course I cannot find it. Here we go. Let's see, so I'm gonna put this on top of here. And this one on top of here. And so one thing also that actually interests me a lot with this um, is 
I actually, in this build, if anyone's familiar or already seen channels um, that has had this build completed, and when you look at the interior uh, of the ship, there's a couple of pillars in the back. They're like gray pillars, light gray pillars with two black um, half circle um, tops on them. And one thing I wanna see is when I get to that point of the build, I wanna see if those pillars are required into the build. And the reason why is because I'm the type of person that I like to, if I get the chance, to modify. This doesn't look right. Now I wanna make sure that I'm putting this down correctly. Okay, so one is going on one side, one's going on the other side. Okay, it's not, um, these two are not the same on both sides, so that kind of threw me off. But I guess this goes to that point of where they say, um, this guy's, um, yeah, this is where this guy's head goes, um, on the, the Phantom. There's a spot here where you would put, once the build is done, and you would be able to put um, the and the uh, android, I forget his name. Let me look at the box real quick. A uh, chopper, you could put his head here to simulate that he's tucked away into the build and you just see his head above like how R2-D2 used to do in the X-Wing and whatnot. So that's that part here. So I almost got confused with the fact that it's not detailed on both sides. But what I was going to get at was, so that interior part that I just mentioned, stay with me. Um, that has those pillars with the, and they're gray, light gray pillars with black. Let's see if I'm where I'm looking for. Black half circle parts on the top. I wanna see if those things are required in the structure. And the reason why is because I am going to get rid of them if they're not. Because one thing I want to do is I wanna try to put beds a uh, place where I can put like little bunk beds. I seen someone do a build kind of similar, not removing those pieces, but throwing in a bed area and whatnot into the build. And I definitely want to do something like that. Um, try to gain as much interior space as I can. Like I said, with the Armor Marauder, I gutted out the seats the way it was originally. And even though I was planning on turning that to a ship, which is what I did, And of course, I just broke this whole piece off because it's actually quite sensitive. Um, even though with the Armor Marauder, I did gut it out because I planned on turning it into a ship. Either way, that's the kind of thing I probably would have done regardless because you have a lot of available interior space and it's used up by the placement of the way things are. Now, granted, that makes things look better uh, in terms of the way that it's supposed to look. But at the same time, and you know, in terms of the flow of the setup, but at the same time too, sometimes things that look neat are sacrificing interior space, which on a more practical term, you would say to yourself, well, I want that interior space. You know, I want to be able to um, have my characters utilize this interior space, you know, a little better maybe. So, um, or have more interior space, you know, that they can use realistically because sometimes too, certain things aren't very realistic uh, in terms of the fact that you would need more space, you know, for the crew. So I definitely want to do that where I can kind of make it where the crew. Now I saw, you know, what's very funny is this. So I seen the inside of, I, I tried to Google what the inside of the ship looks like just so I get an idea of the full interior of the ship and can I modify this ship to be that big? And no, I can't, but you could put some of the elements in it like the sleeping quarters and whatnot. There's a back lounge in the back. So the way it works is in the middle is, um, let me try to not get myself too confused while I'm talking a building. In the middle of the ship, there is like, uh, no, the upper front, there is almost like a, um, a hallway area What am I looking for? I'm looking for another one of these pieces. And since everything here is just white, it's kind of hard to see. But the upper area, is um, the upper part of the ship. <coughs> so, um, 
So the upper part of the ship, like the upper front part of the ship is like a hallway coming from the cockpit. So generally speaking, even though this one's cockpit is really just one cockpit seat and then a gunner um, below it. And, um, and then in the middle, the, the upper front middle, like behind that is a little bit of a hallway. And then from there you have, let me try to find, make sure I'm getting the right piece, two of these. And then from there, okay, just making sure I have the right pieces. And then from there, what you have is um, after that, so it's broken a section. So you have that first upper hallway part. After that, you have a separate closed in area for, it's like a hallway in each side of the hallway is bunk beds. This is the middle portion now. Bunk, like rooms that have bunk beds on them. So little side rooms with a little middle hallway. And then after that is a whole nother section now of just like a big open space of a um, lounge with one of those hollow pad games. And so that is the the setup of what the ship looks like. And it actually looks pretty, I'm not gonna say it seem, it's, it's as, as big as the Millennium Falcon. Well, you know what's funny is this, the Millennium Falcon actually, the general space is a lot, but most of it is, is crowded by hallways and walls and gadgets. So like, for example, the, the, the actual set that you buy in Lego is just open concept, but then you actually look at the actual build, there's all these walls and stuff like that, so it's not as spacious as you would think. But this build here, like not this build, but the actual ship has um, a lot of, it, it's not as much, it has a good amount of space, the actual layout of the ship. Um, not a whole lot, but you know, you have enough space for someone to go into the back sleeping quarters and beyond that, the back lounge, which is pretty cool. I say that to say in this build, even if you were to modify it, you can't squeeze all that out of it. But what you might be able to do is at least mimic those things um, in the ship in terms of having those things. What I mean by that, maybe you can put, this is the wrong piece. Maybe you can put um, some bunk beds or some bed, like maybe one bed on each side somewhere in that general area. And then, you know, maybe somewhere in the back, you could put a seat to kind of mimic a lounge. So you may not have the actual space, but you might be able to at least uh, mimic some of the actual utilities that you would be using in that ship, that area of the ship. So, so I say that to say that would be my plan, what I'm aiming for, um, if it's up to me. So I'm going to see if that's something that I can pull off. You know, if it's if it's possible, because like I said before, previously, I'm a big fan of interior interior space. So um, that's something that I really like. So, so far, this build is coming along. It doesn't feel like a lot, but it feels like a lot of little pieces that have you constantly going back and forth and looking for the right pieces you want. And granted, it doesn't help that I'm rambling on, but I enjoy this rambling. I hope you guys don't mind it as well. Uh, so I'm not obviously finished with this build, but one thing that I want to say is if you, cause I asked this to um, in the comment section on YouTube actually the other day before I decided to get the Millennium Falcon, which is on mail order. I ordered that one from eBay, so it's not gonna come here right away. And then I, this one I ordered off Amazon, which obviously comes in two days. Um, I had asked the question, if I was gonna buy one big ship, one personal hero ship, like I said, my term, I didn't call it that when I phrased the question. But um, which one should I buy? Some people told me, well, you should buy this one because it's newer. Now that I have this one and I have the other one on the way, here's my thoughts on that. 
In terms of interior space, and if you're a fan of interior space and you really want something that has like all this interior space that maybe you can customize along the way and it's just got a lot of playroom and you, you can really fit a lot of characters in it, 100% by all means, it's gonna be the Millennium Falcon because the Millennium Falcon just has a lot of space. So for something that is structurally still strong because it's this pancake shape, so it doesn't need to trade off that it's um, structural interior build for uh, interior space for the characters um, that allows it to have this dynamic to of it or to it where you have this a whole bunch of room more than you'll ever have any other time hold on for a moment the video i mean the the instructions is telling me i now need to pull out stickers i was hoping i wouldn't it wouldn't come to this but it has luckily for me i think these stickers are all yep on one sheet one separate sheet is just for this one so let me see that i am capable of kind of really doing this with the stickers without it getting too all right i think i got it pretty well now i'm pretty good at putting stickers on i won't say i'm a master sticker putter or whatever you would call it but i'm okay i hold my own let's see okay and that's how this thing goes on top here and that's how that's looking and then that goes i really kind of don't know how that connects here okay like that all right that's not bad Okay, it's not squeezing in now. What, what am I doing wrong? This should squeeze right in here. There we go. So let me see what I was saying. So what I was saying was the Millennium Falcon has a lot more space and a lot more room. So with that being said, if I was to ask that question to myself now, which I asked outwards to people at that time, online and you know some people told me the ghost i would say the millennium falcon hands down for the um, both of them got a good decent crew size i think the other one has about five or maybe six figures as well but it's decent size they're, they're both comparable into that uh so does the uh the razor crest um the razor crest has more interior space than this one overall uh the millennium falcon has the most interior space I think the uh, Millennium Falcon is the most, um, I don't want to say boring, but you know it. You, it's been around for the most, the longest time, so you, you know it more. It's, it's always that one that's, you know, a more common, for lack of a better word. I'm not trying to say that it's boring, but I'm just trying to say it's, it's, it's less unique because we, we know it in that aspect. But with that being said, this one seems to be the most well, if someone was a fan of Rebels, then not. But if you've never seen Rebels, then just catching on to the Ahsoka show, this is considered the newest ship uh, in terms of your understanding of the lore. Now, with all that being said, um, with all that being said, the Millennium Falcon is just on practicalness and not just you know which one's been around longer which one you might be more or less excited with because it's been around more or maybe because it's been around more it makes you more excited just on the standpoint of what you're getting the millennium falcon has the best in the interior space um and in that regards i think that it it definitely is the best choice if you can only get one of these i think that the um Razor Crest is definitely very cool with this just kind of it has a more typical ship design not that Star Wars ever has a more normal ship design but in the sense like you know uh, the engines are uh, it's got a front facing I mean that and the ghosts are, are somewhat similar in that aspect so I'm not going to say one is more so than the other but uh, 
I don't know. Just in general, let me just not ramble on and, 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 and sound crazy. Uh, I'm just going to simply say, if you want interior space, it's the Millennium Falcon. Next in line is the Razor Crest and last is the Ghost. But if you want something that feels more unique, and I guess this is just coming from the perspective that this is new to me, um, then I would say that the Ghost feels like the most unique now. Now, a while back, I would definitely would have said the Razor Crest because the Razor Crest was the brand new ship on the um on the block and for anyone who was familiar with rebels it still will be considered the more newer ship on the block and in that regards the mandalorian would definitely have its razor crest would have been the top ship but i feel like because the mandalorian was so popular and they'd almost burned its popularity out that some people might be i'm not going to say sick of it but I really feel like for a moment, it was more popular than the Millennium Falcon. Everyone loved it. Then shortly after that, it became so popular for so long that everyone was like, okay, I'm tired of it. Not saying everyone felt that way, but you know, if a new ship came along, you'd be like, okay, well, the Razorcrest has been there now doing this thing so long that now I feel like it's, it's, it's burned out its excitement. Millennium Falcon, it maybe had a phase like that many years back, but at this point now, it's just kind of streamlined with just being just the standard. So I feel like this ship to me personally, and this is just because I've never seen Rebels, that this ship is um, the new exciting thing. Like I said, so everyone's gonna feel differently because if you watched Rebels, you weren't gonna feel that way probably, where for me, I've never seen Rebels. So to me, this coming from the Ahsoka show is the new fun, ship it's not even the ship that's prominently showed on there but it obviously is the ship in lego form that has the most going for it because it actually has um you know interior room and it's actually considered like the big ship for the quote-unquote hero ship um because ahsoka's ship which is supposed to be the hero ship because it's her show and it really is supposed to be she has no interior space on her ship. So, I mean, what can really be said about that? You know what I mean? Um, so that it just is what it is. Um, that just is what it is. So with that being said, for me, this is the new cool ship. And with that being said, if that's what you want, something different and cool, then this would be out of those three ships, this would be the ship to get. But like I said, if you just want interior space, it's the Millennium Falcon. If you want nostalgia, it's the Millennium Falcon. If you want to feel like that whole, if you just like the Mandalorian and you just like that, because that was the coolest thing around. And I'm not going to lie. If all ships came out at the exact same time with their respective heroes and characters at the exact same time, and this is not a knock to any of the original uh, Star Wars fans, because I grew up with the original one as well. But um, in all honesty, if I had to say which one was, um, you know, if they all came out at this exact moment, right now, the Mandalorian is the coolest uh, coolest character. And therefore, you know, you're gonna gravitate to his, to his ship. Well, you don't necessarily, the character doesn't make the ship, but in a, in, to some degree it does. And with that being said, I would totally gravitate towards the uh, Razor Crest um, as the number one, if they all came out at the exact same time and I was going based off the character that I like and, and whatnot. But being that that's not the case, um, and they didn't all come out at the same time, you know, they're all gonna be weighted differently for different reasons. So if you're buying just one ship, like I mentioned before, is all I can really say to you, pick your poison, pick the one that you feel that, um, you know, is, is what you want. But I gave you the reasons on why I think you should go for one versus the other if those same reasons apply to you. If they don't, well, then they just don't apply to you, you know? But like I said to me, this is considered the new ship. So this was the first one that I actually ordered. Then I saw the Millennium Falcon for a deal. And that's the only reason why I bought it. Otherwise, I would have waited for the Black Friday. But I actually saw it on eBay for a pretty good deal. So that's the only reason why I decided to jump on it. Otherwise, I would have waited and just said, you know what? I'll wait it out. Um, and this would have been the, the only ship that I would have had because I said to myself, the same reasons that I just mentioned a moment ago, I want the new shiny thing because that's just how I'm feeling right now in terms of um, ship design. 
Now I'm all about interior space and this one actually does not have as much interior space, but I'm still willing to work with it because it's the new ship and that just kind of makes me want to explore it a little more. And obviously, you know, um, I'm the Ahsoka show is out right now, so I'm watching that. So the more you see it do things in the show, the more you get excited about the ship itself. You know, if that makes sense. So, but so far it hasn't really done a lot because it's really not the star ship of the show. But unfortunately, the Ahsoka ship really just, they didn't, um, you know, do that much with it in terms of, um, in terms of Lego build. And, and the truth is, you know, I, I like this ship a lot, whatever, it seems very cool, but the truth is that's actually a shame, you know, when you really think about it. Um, if we had to be honest with ourselves, it's actually really, really a shame. Um, and I say that to say Ahsoka is the star of the show and it's her ship. They really should have made that ship the starship, whatever it is that they had to do, even if they had to make it a little bigger or whatever they had to do to give it more, um, you know, space interior space so it really had that feel especially considering that you know the two main characters ahsoka and um sabine is that her name I, I might be pronouncing it wrong i'm sorry if i am um but that you know those are the two main characters that you see in the ship while everyone from the ghost is really like a supporting character so with that being said in theory it should have been where her ship obviously would have been the main ship but the thing about it is they chose not to. And I think a part of that might be the fact that being that everything is so Rebels inspired and continuing off Rebels, maybe they felt like, well, in Rebels, the main hero ship, and I think maybe the only ship, but I, I'm not really familiar if multiple heroes had ships like how they do in the Ahsoka show. Um, but um but you know uh it, it definitely feels that they're going off the basis of well you know in rebels the star ship was the ghost so we're gonna build off of that in this one because this is very rebels inspired even though um time to put on another sticker even though Hmm. It's interesting. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, this gets one on both sides, a sticker on both sides, so that's why. And I gotta make sure that I put it on correctly. I see now why people always say that they hate stickers and Legos because, you know, if you put a sticker on wrong. And I've known that from previous things with, that require stickers. It really sucks. But going back to what I was saying, being that this show is very Rebels inspired and the Rebels bit heavy, you know, based, maybe their mentality is, well, we're gonna cater more to the Rebel aspect than we are the Ahsoka aspect, even though it's Ahsoka show. And in that case, they're making sure that the ship that seems to have the stealing the show right now, in not stealing the show in the show, but in terms of the Lego form is the ghost, which like I said, is a little bit of a shame because I definitely think that they should have um, really put a little bit more work into Ahsoka's ship. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. It seems to be more revolving around that play feature that it spins. And I'm one of those people where I, this is not going to be everybody. So I'm not going to um, knock anybody who prefers that you have that feature on the ship. But I personally am the type of person who would have said, I would prefer that you not have that spinning feature on a soaker ship if it meant you're going to be able to have a bigger interior ship because to me that's what matters and um 
and her not having the ship with a decent interior inside that the guy, that the people can kind of sit around and walk around, especially where, if I'm not mistaken, and I, I could be wrong because I might be getting my scenes mixed up, and I hope I'm not, that there was a scene in the show, maybe the second episode or so, where Sabine is training on Ahsoka's ship um, you know, doing some kind of, I think it's like some lightsaber work or whatever the case is with a helmet on trying to like similar to what Luke was doing, uh, when he was brand new with Obi-Wan, matter of fact, with the Obi-Wan hut set that I have where he's trying to hit the little, um, he's trying to hit the little, uh, you know, little, uh, what do you call it? Um, robot little ball that you know flies around that he's got to hit um for practicing and um she's doing something similar to that uh sabine is trying to hit that and you know in that moment you see all this interior space and i'm not saying you can mimic that i'm not saying that that's what's going to be the case but at least give us some amount of space even a box that's like maybe like that big you know what i mean maybe like a Maybe like a, a six by at least like maybe a good, give us like a six by eight, at least somewhere in the middle of that outside of the cockpit. So you have the cockpit and then a six by eight space that someone can just stand in and, you know, just kind of, um, you know, so they can mimic that scene, you know, because at the end of the day, when you make these um, ships based off, especially when you're basing off the show, which let's let's put it out there and be straightforward. Um Disney, I'm sorry, Lego loves, loves that Disney is making these live action show Star Wars because it gives them so much content just to make off of uh, at that given moment, you know, without having to say, well, we got to go off the old trilogies and the movies, this and that, because now this is a new show like all the time. They didn't really build off and and Endor um, to the best of my knowledge. Maybe they did. Maybe they put a, out a set or two, but Nonetheless, you had, you know, the Bad Batch ones that came out. You had the Mandalorian, obviously. You had, you know, all these other sets that are coming out and now the Ahsoka one. So they're loving that they could just keep dropping sets based off all this stuff. But at the same time, too, the purpose behind it was always to be able to mimic the things that you see in the show um, in your Legos, you know, the idea was capturing those scenes, which is why you have some scenes, like even for example, the Mandalorian, you, you actually have just the scene where Luke comes in and destroys those, um, death robots. I forget what they call death troopers or whatever they're called. Uh, but the fact that, you know, it comes that that's a scene where he comes on the ship and he does that. And you actually have a set that's just focused on that you know, on that, on the scene. So the idea is we, you know, as people who, who collect Legos or, or, you know, whatnot, or, you know, just like building the Lego sets or whatever you want to say, they like sometimes just a scene, you know, sometimes it's just about a particular scene. And with that being said, the point I'm trying to get at is that I'm having one of those sticker problems, but I'm just going to go with it. It didn't come out very good, but I really don't want to keep peeling this on and off. So you can see there that it didn't go on straight. So I hope it's not going to be a big deal, but it's a little hard. I should have laid this down when I did it. It's better to lay your piece. Just a mental note, just a little note to you guys. Lay your Lego piece on a flat surface and then apply the sticker because I think it just works a lot better than me trying to do it both in the hand. So that is crooked, but it is what it is. I'm not I'm not going back to do anything about it because sometimes when you take a sticker off too many times, it loses its stickiness. And the next thing you know, it just falls off. So it's better to have a have the sticker there than not. But anyway, back to what I was saying. This looks, actually looks pretty bad the way I put it on, but it is what it is. Um, my point. That I was going to get at. I have no clue what that thing is supposed to be on the back there like that. It looks weird to me. Well, my point I was going to get at is that 
So taking that scene in, 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 you know, Mandalorian, they literally gave you a set for the scene because they know people want to mimic a scene. So with that being said, even though you have sets of, of huge, you know, spaceships and this and that, at the end of the day, when people want to put it on display or they want to play, maybe they want to mimic a scene. And, and, and the point that you could have this scene of Ahsoka trying to train Sabine and you can't even display that because there's no room on the ship. Um, you know, that in itself, I am missing a, I don't know if this is the piece, this is the color, I guess so. Um, it looks a little different, but um, let me just make sure. But yeah, so my point is you may want to reenact that scene and literally you can't because there's no room on the ship and so that is my point with that sorry that i rambled so much about that but that is my point with that so i think it would have made sense especially when that is the the really ahsoka ship is the ship that you're seeing most on the show it really should have made sure to make to really make sure that that was the ship that had that interior space um, because obviously, I don't know the future episodes that are going to come up, but the ghost is not the ship right now that people are training on, that they're sleeping on, that they're fighting on, that you're watching them do any of those scenes. So you're not even going to be able to mimic any kind of scene from the show. Um, so anything you would have wanted to mimic on the show with, uh, with um, Ahsoka in her character... You really can't do it in her ship. Even the android that she has, that she has a lot of scenes where she's talking to. Um, you know, I understand sometime in a cockpit, you're not going to have a bunch of room because even the Millennium Falcon doesn't have four seats in the uh, minifig scale um, cockpit. But guess what? Um, at the least, <sighs> at the least, you know that you can make your characters have a conversation somewhere in the ship and they're all in the ship. Obviously, because the Millennium Falcon has a lot of room. You would wish that Ahsoka's ship had a lot of background, uh, had like at least some kind of just general um, neutral area where you can have your characters like have a conversation. Maybe the android wants to have a conversation with Ahsoka about how the mission's going bad. But anyway, I rambled on about that too long already. I know you guys are sick of that, but that was just my point. This build is coming along, but... It is so long already. So just so you know, uh, probably in about another 20 minutes or 30 minutes would have been the length of time that I finished the Obi-Wan hut. So this one definitely takes a longer time. Now, maybe it's just because of the way. Maybe it's just the way that I'm, I'm rambling. So. But at the same token. Um, it has taken me that long so that is what it is i guess but so far the build is coming along um like i said before it's very interesting to know that you have your own little escape pod ship or exploration ship i think it was more like what it is um but that's definitely cool because if you're just familiar with or you like um you know spaceship um adventures you always have most ships always have an exploration ship even things like star trek or whatever you know like the exploration ship that comes down and sends the people down to the planet and they and they can um then go explore and granted it only has room for one um figure but nonetheless it's still um cool that you at least have that as an option well not really because you actually also can have the android chopper get in it technically because his head this is why they did this right here his head could squeeze right here and then um it would look like not not on this side but on this side and it looks like he's like ducked in there the way they do in star wars obviously i'm sure you guys have already seen videos of this already so you already know this concept let me try to speed up my actions a little bit because i am completely slow-mo right now i'm sorry about that but i'm just enjoying the combo and i hope you guys are enjoying the combo as well um yeah i 
let's see what we got coming along here. So this definitely tells me one thing that the main ship build is going to be a very long time and I think I'm definitely going to have to separate all the videos in um, parts instead of just making a whole video and connecting them all together because I think then this video will be several hours long and you guys are definitely not going to be able to sit down and watch the whole thing but um, you know, I don't have a problem with that breaking it up in pieces. I just hope that you guys don't mind to stay tuned and, you know, kind of enjoy rocking out with me with these videos here on the build. Now, I know most people do speed builds when they do their videos, but I'm new to this whole thing. So speed building is not in the cards for me. So I'm taking my time and I'm just rambling with you guys. We are having fun, chilling out. And so this right here is the side piece that you have like, it opens up a little bit. It has a little wiggle room, but it's not a lot, um, which is interesting. I thought that it had a more more articulation than that. Not that it's a big deal, it doesn't have to, but um, I just thought in the videos that it did from watching some videos, but apparently it doesn't, and there's nothing wrong with that. This build right here, I wonder how many pieces actually was just in this build alone. That's very interesting um, because I, I don't know, matter of fact, I don't even know I'm looking right now for uh, one of my other Lego set boxes and I and I don't know I was going to compare it to how many pieces are in the um, Obi-Wan hut and I don't even know where that box is. I thought it was right next to me, but it's apparently not. Um, hmm. Let's see here. We are almost done with this build here. Um, and I am definitely getting myself almost burned out. So I'm definitely going to finish this. And then we are going to pause. No, not pause. We're going to stop. And then we're going to continue again um, a little bit later with the part two down the line. But post in the comments your thoughts, you guys, in terms of ships, you know, what is your favorite um, Star Wars Lego ship that exists um, in general? And then tell me what your favorite personal hero ship is um, in terms of, you know, the um, obviously it could be the Millennium Falcon, it could be the Razor Crest, it could be the Ghost, it could even be the Bad Batch one because that one's out there too, it's not as popular and they discontinued that already and so it's kind of expensive but for those who had picked it up and, and you know and they really like it that one's on the table as well just tell me uh, what is your favorite and if there's any other ones you guys can think of too maybe the ahsoka one too that's still a personal hero ship it has no interior space but it is what it is it's her ship she's a hero character a main character um tell me you know um anybody's ship that that what's your favorite you know um what's your thoughts what's your favorite 
Is it this one? Is it the ghost? Whichever one it might be. Just let me know. What's your favorite ship? Um, I am very curious to know that. So let me know because I definitely want to know what is your favorite ship? Um, I would probably say right now for me, the excitement of this ship is, is pretty cool. I'm just kind of understanding it. I'm learning it, but in general, I'm going to probably say for me, it's the Razor Crest um, in general. And I love interior space. So the Millennium Falcon definitely has that, um, you know, has it beat in terms of that. For Lego, I like interior space, but for, for the shows and for like the real, like, you know, the actual, you know, medium, um, you know, most of them have comparable space. And so with that being the case, uh, sticker time, unfortunately, uh, with that being the case, What sticker is this actually? Number 13. Oh, okay. Well, that's very interesting. One of the stickers is actually not on that sheet. It's on the other sheet. So I had to go and get that sticker now. And let me see if I could do this. Like I said, the best way to do it is leave it on a hard surface is the best way to get it down because now you're not also trying to navigate where you're putting it. And this one came out pretty good. So, um, what was I getting at? Yes. So to me, I would say the Razor Crest, even though right now, you know, it's it's been around for a bit. I, I absorb so much of its content that it seems less, you know, of the new kid on the block right now. But in general, I think like I would say that to me is is probably my favorite um, of all the hero ships in general in, in, in the universe continuity, not necessarily Lego build, but just in general, in the universe continuity, I would say that it's the Razor Crest. There's just something about it that I just think really I like a lot. It reminds me of, to be honest with you, what it reminds me of is what it reminds me of is um, almost like a what's the term I'm looking for. It reminds me of almost like a, uh, a RV, like one of those kind of camping RVs, almost like a space camping RV. I know that seem, might seem lame to some people, but that's what it kind of reminds me of a little bit. It's, it's, it's compact in its interior. I mean, it seems big, but the truth is, but what's one thing that's interesting is on the UCS version, I mean, obviously that's that's going to depict the true aspect of it in terms of all the rooms it has and the spaces it has. But even in the show, it didn't really show much on the top floor as much space as you see, like in the UCS version it has like a lot of like back room when you go behind the, the cockpit and there's like that whole floor. It's It's really pretty spacious. But what's funny is that um let's see number eight number nine sticker eight where is sticker eight there we go what's interesting is even though you have a lot of space there 
funny enough, they actually don't um, show that much, show that that often on the show, that uh, that area, you know. So I say that to say, um, it, it, you know, that that's it, you just really kind of see him jump down and slide down the ladder. All of a sudden, he's in the, in the lower area, and the lower area really kind of gives you that feeling like a like a RV where it's like you got the bed area you got a couple of things the bathroom but it's very compact it has that very RV feel which to me is just there's something about it that's just kind of fun and interesting in that regard it's like you know it's tiny but it's fun I didn't do a good job with the stickers but I'm not going to take it off this one's a little off balance uh, it's it's small, but it's fun. And, and, and if, if I had to compare it to something, I compare it to if anybody is a fan of, say, tiny houses and, and watching tiny houses get built or, or how they utilize the space in tiny houses, if you're familiar with watching like the HG TV station or any or even YouTube when people do tiny houses, then uh, essentially... How do I put this on? This is very weird. Okay, there we go. Essentially, um, that's what it's like. It, it feels like that. It feels like that kind of feel. Um, so that's why I like it. You know, it's, it's like a little RV. And so here you go. The build. And I am able to put... Okay, so the gray gun was actually a backup gun. Because here in the book, it shows, you can't really see here. So I'm just going to show you in, in actual real time, the little cargo area here, which I'm having some trouble opening, is to stow away the gray blaster and the binoculars. And um, we have a couple of extra pieces, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can always sometimes turn them into other things, but I'm gonna just put them to the side so they're not in the way, along with the um, little separator piece. And I'm gonna take this guy here, and I'm going to put him into the seat. He doesn't need to be like in there super snug, but he fits. And there you go, this is um, the Phantom little pod. You have little blasters here, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, you know, my sticker application was okay. Some of them are okay. I actually did something pretty bad. Let me correct that. Um, this piece right here, obviously you can see is on backwards. So let me see which one is on the wrong way versus which one's on the right way or did i just mess them up totally let's see this is supposed to go like that and this one's supposed to go like that okay so there they go now they're on correctly um and yeah so my applic my sticker application was okay because these two were done good this one was done pretty good on the top not perfect but pretty good. The window ones here, were, one of them was good. One of them was bad. This back one here was pretty bad. So, you know, maybe these ones right here were pretty good too. So maybe 50%. That's not bad. And then they show you little stars on it to say, hey, you completed the build. And that is the end of the Phantom build bag one. And I will see you guys next time on the other builds, the other bags or however many bags we're gonna do next time in regards to putting together the ghost ship. All right, catch you guys in the next one.